Hi, good morning, and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. I'm Kristen Omdahl, and we're here live in Southwest Florida at the beach. This is the beautiful Gulf of Mexico behind me. It is chilly today, and it is warming up much faster than I expected. I, we, um, it was only 52 when I woke up this morning, and I was planning on wearing my uh, winter coat and a messy bun hat, which I have right here, and this, and, uh, and, and it's just, the temperature is rising so quickly as I've been here now. Um, I'm not even gonna make it through the whole show with my sweater on, in fact, I gotta take it off already. <laughs> I'll leave the cowl on though. I think the cowl and the tank top might be a good uh, combination. Fix my pants. <laughs> Hi Petra, hi Melanie, hi Angela and Donna and Lisa, Debbie, Diane, Thea, Joe, good morning. Welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast, episode 817. Hi Rita, good morning. Yeah, so I planned on wearing my full-blown winter parka um, this morning. And good thing I didn't, I would have been melting for sure. <laughs> so I am wearing the Roxy polo, uh, the Roxy cowl, and I brought this messy bun hat from 24 Crochet Hats. I'll show it to you on in the book. If I put it on, I'll mess up my bun now because I'll be taking it right back off because I'm warm. So I'll show you a photo of it on instead. In fact, it's called the Primrose Hat. Here it is here, but I was gonna show you the photo of it on. Where is that? Here it is. The one marked 75. That's how it looks on. Well, I think I'm gonna freeze. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. Did you make some time to do any crafting? I spent a lot of time working on new patterns. I'm working on a bunch of new knitting patterns right now. And uh, I did a marathon of a very weird, disturbing show over the weekend that uh, I liked, but it was still very disturbing called Black Mirror. Has anybody watched that? I watched a handful of episodes yelling at the TV because I was squirming so badly at the content and uh, working on some exciting new projects that I will be able to show you hopefully soon. Um, they're not done yet, but working on them soon. Today I am working on the belt. Sorry, I was counting. Today I'm working on a belt for the Tunisian cardigan pattern that is not quite ready yet. Like I said, I wanted to have a belt first before I release the pattern. Most of it is done at this point. Um, I've just got a few more days worth of work to do on the charts and the uh, Angela Black Mirror is her favorite sci-fi series. It is wild, yes. I, um, for some reason, my TV showed me the last season first so I started with season five and then I went back to season one. A uh, little confusing there, but each episode is completely unrelated to the, any of the other episodes. In fact, different actors, different stories all together. So it really doesn't matter where you start, but man, it is dark and disturbing and wild and really just, uh, I don't even know how else to describe it, but it was fun, <laughs> very creative and kept me entertained while I was knitting something, uh, knitting a shawl. I knit a shawl on Saturday in five or six hours. Yeah, it's wild, Christine, it really is. And unless you, if you like dark, disturbing kind of stuff, maybe give it a try. And if you don't, absolutely do not try it. <laughs> Good morning, Judy. Thanks for the links to the book and the patterns. I appreciate it. I know everybody else does as well. This, uh, the cowl that I'm wearing, isn't it cute? It's uh, very squishy and it's holding multiple strands of Be So Baby yarn together at the same time. This one is knit also, I believe. Yeah, this is knit. And uh, it starts with bubble gum and works its way into watermelon. Aren't those colors great together? I love this cowl and I didn't get a chance to wear it too much this winter. I guess it really wasn't cold enough for it, but it sure was this morning. Maybe not so much anymore, but uh, it was this morning and I'm glad I got a chance to wear it because it's so squishy and soft and I love a cowl that's tall enough that it can fold over on itself like that. Like I love that look and I love that feel of something that has to fold over on itself. 
Petra is excited for the new Tunisian cardigan. Me too. I'm very excited to wear it for everybody and show you uh, the different features of it. And I'm excited to share the pattern and share some tutorial videos about it. It's going to be great. I think you are going to really enjoy making it. It is very easy to make. And if you haven't done much Tunisian in the past, it's a nice, um, it's a nice practice for Tunisian because it's a bigger project, but it's a simple stitch, so you get a lot of practice, and we all know what happens when you practice something, right? You get better at it. So, um, and it doesn't take very long to make either. I think for a large project, it's relatively slow, or relatively fast. Sorry, I was reading and trying to talk at the same time. <laughs> and, um, it's a Tunisian double crochet stitch, and I think that that is a relatively quick stitch, which is great for a large project, because it means it goes a little bit faster. I know we can all get a little impatient sometimes when we're working on big things, right? Would you like to see what I'm doing for this belt? Not only could you do this belt for uh, the Tunisian cardigan, but it's the kind of a stitch and the kind of a rope chain that would work for lots of things that you would might want to tie whether it's as a belt or a strap for a handbag or even maybe a headband there's all sorts of reasons why you could use this kind of stitch so i'm going to come a little closer so you can see what i'm doing let me start the next row first okay so i've worked four double crochets with the first one being a chain three that count as a double crochet in the space between double crochets two and three in the previous row. So if you're, if you just work this row, it's chain three that counts as the first double crochet, then double crochet two, three, and four. So now what I'm going to do on the following row is I'm going to not slip stitch into any of those stitches, but that space between stitches two and three which are the two center ones you want to slip stitch into the space between all four stitches so we'll slip stitch just right into that space in the middle of the four and then we'll chain three and work three more double crochets all in that same space and that's all you repeat so i worked my four stitches in that space between the four stitches from the previous row. Can everybody see that okay? Did that, does that show up all right? It's really bright out here for me, so it's hard for me to see. It's hard for me to see how it looks on the camera, but isn't that a nice fabric? It's got a lot, it's got a little more sturdiness to it than, uh, yes, I think it would be an okay project for, uh, I think the cardigan would be okay for someone who's new to Tunisian crochet. Because like I said, there's very minimal shaping in it and it's a lot of practice of one stitch. So I do believe that it might be a good uh, project for, st for a beginner. Now we could have done this with foundation ovals, which would have just been one chain and one double crochet, but I felt like that's a, a more delicate fabric and I wanted to give a little more meat to it. So I think, that doing four stitches instead of two is giving me the body that I wanted for this belt. But very similar to what we do for foundation ovals, but just in a slightly different combination. Does anybody have any questions about that? Thanks, Lisa. I love it too. It feels great. This would make a great purse handle too, I think, or purse handles. And keep in mind, if you have a pattern for any of my purse patterns or bag patterns or anybody else's purse patterns uh, or any kind of patterns if there's an element to it that you don't like you can always add something else once you have other skills in your arsenal right so let's say for example on my most recent bag pattern the bag with the motifs let's say you are feel intimidated by doing that five strand chain why don't you could skip it and do something like this instead right yeah, this is a fun little stitch. I like how you uh, work the stitches in the center of the row previous. I think it gives a little more body to the fabric. I don't want to say it's stiff because it's not stiff, but like I said, it has a little more meatiness to it. It's, it's a little more sturdy, which I think works really great for something that's utilitarian like a belt or purse straps. 
for bag straps. And this is Be So Baby yarn in color navy. Hello, Evergreen. I think I missed a lot of names in the beginning. Yeah, a pattern's just a, a starting place, Christine. If you don't like the edging on something, that's that's where you have the choice to do something different. Just like you can change the colors if you uh, if a pattern is like, for example, this cowl. Um, you can fall in love with this cowl and totally enjoy making it, but not like pink. <laughs> you know, you could pick two different colors to make this. Or let's say you don't want to do the color work. You could do it all in one color. Um, let's say that you wanted it to be longer or shorter or wider or narrower. A pattern is just a starting off place. Everybody has different likes, and that's why there's, there's a level of creativity not only in designing patterns but also in making them and let's say you wanted to make variations on things to make it more than one time you could make this this exact same size and this exact same color and then you could turn around and make it in other colors and maybe even make it smaller or larger for other looks there's so many different ways that you can take a pattern and run with it for another example, so the motif bag that I just mentioned it is in five colors, I believe. And I can't think of the name of it. Um, does anybody remember what I called that big bag? I can't remember the name of it off the top of my head. But anyway, once you have those charts and those instructions for making those gorgeous motifs in five colors, you could also turn it. I thought it was the Lisa Marie, but I wasn't sure. Thanks, Judy. So the Lisa Mo Marie motif bag once you have that pattern and you have those charts and the written instructions for all those motifs, you could also turn around and make anything, any kind of fabric with them. You could make a blanket, you could make a cardigan, you could make a pullover, you could make a shawl, you could make a scarf, you could make anything and you could even either make it in those five colors, any combination of colors or all in one color. So it once you have a pattern, it's a starting off place to do kind of anything you want with it. Uh, and that's kind of exciting as well. It's fun to follow something exactly. It reminds me of like, why HelloFresh? Um, why HelloFresh is fun for me sometimes. Sometimes it's fun to not have to make any decisions, right? So if you like the way a pattern looks as is, you just follow it to the T. But let's say you feel like being a little more creative sometimes. Um, that's fine too. It, it, it's all part of the creative process. Sometimes we like to just do things without having to think, have a Zen project, right? And sometimes we like something a little meatier. There's times when it's Zen to not have to think about something. And sometimes it's Zen to think, have to think harder and concentrate on something to push out other thoughts out of your head. I find that both are so fascinating and both can be, that's one of the reasons why I love playing piano so much. Sometimes playing something that I know by heart is easy and I can not think about it, but sometimes learning something new is where I can really dive in and really have an escape or vacation from my thoughts. So that's the same way with knitting and crochet patterns. If you're making something that you've made a bunch of times before, you can zone out because you don't have to think very hard. But then when you want to learn something new, sometimes that can be exactly the distraction you need from whatever thoughts about any other aspect of your life you want to break from. So it's all good. And you don't have to do, you don't have to pick it one way. There's no wrong way to be creative and there's no limit to how many different ways you can be creative as well. So uh, it really just, it's so exciting, isn't it? <laughs> Who here agrees with me that they like a combination of low concentration and high concentration projects? Don't you find that sometimes one is more soothing to whatever type of thoughts are going on in your head, right? I find it to be very fascinating. Uh, Petra, I couldn't tell you that off the top of my head. Uh, Seaside Siesta has light pastel colors, but I, I, without being in front of it, I could really couldn't tell you what colors it matches identically. If you want to email Judy or me after the show, uh, we would be more than happy to help you with that, but I can't do it here, I'm sorry. 
Beatrice is making 50 Easter ear warmers. Wow, that's exciting. I know a lot of people make hats for babies and hats for babies in hospitals too, and that's such a lovely thing to do. And that's also something that ends up becoming mindless zen once you have a pattern so, so perfectly memorized in your head that you can do it without a whole lot of concentration. Somebody just said they like projects like that for taking into meetings. Absolutely, because then if once you've really gotten something down pat, you can talk about something completely different, like I'm doing while making this little belt right now. I'm not having to count how many of the are going, um, how many of stitches are going in that spot. I've gotten it down, gotten it down pat enough that I can talk about other things. So yes, that's the type of thing that would be great for taking into a meeting as well. But like I said, so a high concentration project is also something that can be very distracting as well. Very exciting. Oh, there you go. Yeah, Judy, thanks for posting a link to that. You can order a Be So Baby color card that includes a snippet of all 60 colors and then you can choose which colors you think match the best as well. That's also very handy. Um, and you could, there's a link to purchase that on the live chat right now. Judy just posted it. So the person that was asking about what Seaside Siesta looks like, if you don't want to just purchase it right away, you could get a color card so you could see all the colors and mix and match them as you see fit. Very helpful. I know many people have purchased it and have really enjoyed being able to see all 60 colors together. I don't have any announcements to make about new yarn today, Nora. Um, I do have some announcements coming soon, but I'm not going to share anything right now. Thanks, Lady B. Next up will be uh, some new knitting patterns, I believe. Well, do I have any? Uh, next up is going to be videos for the Elvis named patterns from for, for spring. So we already did the Margot cardigan. So the next stuff will be like the, uh, the Gladys uh, shrug and the Lisa Marie bag and the Priscilla knit shawl. Those patterns will be getting video tutorials. So, oh, and the, Pris uh, I said that wrong. Priscilla is the circle vest. The knit shawl is something else. Hmm. <sighs> You know, I, I worked a lot this weekend and then did a whole lot of cooking yesterday. And by last night, I was like, wow, I don't know if that was the greatest idea. Since um, come Sunday night, I realized that I should be well rested and ready to start work on Monday. And I ended Sunday exhausted. And uh, I knew it was gonna be <laughs> tough getting started. Gracie Shaw, there we go. Thanks, Judy. Uh, yeah, so there'll be videos for those coming next. And then after that, hopefully I'll be able to announce some knitting patterns coming soon too. So I think that's next up. And then they'll obviously there's always new announcements as we go on, but those are the, those are the new things coming soonest. Hopefully that answered someone's question. All right, I'm gonna set that down. And who wants to read a quote this morning from a Create, Share, Inspire notebook? I brought this, well, the good news is because I have all my yarn for this project in my double zip bag, um, I still had my books in it from the last time. I'm getting a nice tan. I, you know, I don't even go outside that much, Christine, so it could just be the way the light hits. What's really wonderful about early morning light and early evening light is that it has this glow to it, and I really do think that it uh, makes you look like you're tan when you're not, because I don't lay out in the sun at all, ever. Let's see, where did we end off last time? Oh, this is a good one. This is by Jeremy Taylor. Focus on the strengths of those around you. This is such a powerful quote to me because I find it is so tempting and so easy to focus on others' flaws around you. What has this person done or not done for me? or for themselves or this and that. And I think that, at least for me, it's real easy to slip into focusing on people's flaws instead of their strengths. 
So uh, I think this is a wonderful quote and always a great reminder because when you focus on the positive, you absolutely bring more positive into your thoughts, which then brings more positivity into your whole experience. So thank you, Jeremy Taylor. I know I love getting um, reminders like this. And if I do, hopefully you do as well, because like I always say, we are more alike than we are different, right? So thank you, Jeremy Taylor. Focus on the strengths of those around you. Yes. And this could also apply to the man in the mirror too, right? <laughs> man, or, I didn't mean man in the mirror, the person in the mirror, right? Uh, sometimes some of us have an awfully critical uh, opinion of ourselves when we look in the mirror. So this could apply to ourselves as well, but it definitely helps when dealing with other people and in relationships, definitely. Uh, I had a little moment with Marlon this morning and uh, I know that this is what I needed to see. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I mean, Marlon's a lovely human being and he's wonderful and he's amazing, but he did something this morning that disappointed me and I focused on it all the way over here and I was pretty upset and uh, it was, and it turns out it's not that big a deal. And so this was like, exactly what I needed to see. Right. Not a big deal. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> oh gosh. Well, thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. I hope you enjoyed the beach, the sound of the waves, the colors, the scenery, my little tutorial, chatting with me and everyone else. What a great morning, huh? I hope you have a great rest of your day too. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.